Hey guys, in this video, we're going to look at two ways to track a moving object in DaVinci Resolve. So let's go ahead and take our video right here directly to the Fusion page. Now the first method will involve using a tracker node. So to do that, we're gonna go to Tools, and then under Tracking, we're going to bring in the tracker node. Now the key thing to note here is that whatever is connected to the background of the tracker node is going to be the video that we want to track. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is to drag our pattern box as well as search area over whatever it is that we want to track. And any changes that you make to the pattern box as well as the search box is going to be reflected in the bottom right corner here. And you can also track more than one pattern, more than one object in one tracker node. And you can also adjust how adaptive you want the tracking to be to account for some minor changes, minor shifts in pattern over time. And once we make our selection, now since our playhead is right now located at the first frame, we can just go ahead and hit track from the current frame. This will allow us to track this entire render range. And once this is done, you're gonna see that all the location data at each frame for this pattern is now keyframed and it's ready for us to use. So one thing we can do at this point is to go to Operation tab, and then under Operations, select Match Move, and we'll leave everything at the default setting, but essentially, we're using the Tractor node as a Merge node at this point. So what we can do is to bring in, let's say, a Text node connected to the foreground of the Tractor node, write out our text here, and you're gonna notice right away that this text is going to be connected to the pattern that we just tracked. Both of them will move in sync. And if you don't like the position of the text, you can easily change that. And this will not disrupt the synchronized movement of the text with the pattern that we just tracked. And uh, we can also come to the tracker node itself, uh, go to trackers, and then uh, under X offset uh, and Y offset, adjust that to achieve the same result. Now, another way to use this data is to have other nodes connect to it but we're not gonna go to the operation tab and change the mode. We're going to leave tracker node as it is. And then we're going to connect other nodes, let's say a text node after it. And here we're just going to write out our text real quick. And once that is done, we're gonna go to layout tab and then locate the center parameter. Now we're going to right click and then connect to tracker one and then tracker one offset position, which stores all the data that we just tracked. And now you're gonna see that this is going to achieve exactly what we did earlier. And if you don't like the position of the text relative to the pattern, you can come to shading under position, adjust the offset parameter here. This will get the text to a position that is going to work best for you. And the great thing with this method is that you can connect as many nodes as you want to the track data. So for our example here, let's go ahead and bring another node, let's say another text node, and we're going to write out our text real quick here once that is done. Once again, come to the layout tab and connect the center parameter to tracker one offset position, which stores all the track data and adjust the position of the text relative to the track pattern. And you're gonna see that this is pretty much the same as what we did earlier, but using a different node. So once again, you can connect as many nodes as you want uh, with this method to the track data that is stored in the tracker node. The other method of tracking involves using modifier instead of the tracker node. So for the sake of demonstration, let's bring in a blur node. So our goal here is to blur out part of this video where the car is moving. So we're also going to bring a rectangle masking node to help us with that. Let's also bring up the blur size a little and then we'll come back to the rectangle masking node. Now here we're going to right click and then go to center, which is at the bottom of the menu, and then go to modifier with select tracker position. Now, if we come to the modifier tab, you're gonna see that we have a mini version of the tracker node we saw earlier. While the workflow is pretty much the same, the difference is that this is only local to the masking node. Another thing to note here is that tracker source cannot be blank. If it's blank, then anytime we make a change to the tracking, all these nodes will turn red, which means they won't work. So what we have to do is to make sure that we drag and drop the video that we want to track into tracker source. So once that is done, now we can go ahead and adjust our pattern box, our search box there, and also make changes to the adaptive mode if needed. And then let's go ahead and just finish tracking this whole thing. 
Okay, so once all that is done, you're going to see that now the blur box is moving in sync with the movement of the car. And if you want to change the position of the blur box, you can easily come back to modifier, go to track one, and then adjust X offset and the Y offset parameters. This is going to allow you to change the position of the blur box relative to the track pattern. Okay, guys, I hope this helps and I will see you next time.